Out of My Mind by Sharon M. Draper. Once I started school, however, I discovered I had a much bigger problem than just falling out of my chair. I needed words. How was I supposed to learn anything if I couldn't talk? How was I supposed to answer questions? Or ask questions? I knew a lot of words, but I couldn't read a book. I had a million thoughts in my head, but I couldn't share them with anybody. On top of that, people didn't really expect the kids in age five to learn much anyway. It was driving me crazy. I couldn't have been much more than six when Mrs. V figured out what I needed. One afternoon after school, after a week of ice cream with caramel sauce, she flipped through the cable channels and stopped at a documentary about some guy named Stephen Hawking. Now, I'm interested in almost anything that has a wheelchair in it. Duh! I even like the Jerry Lewis telethon. Turns out Stephen Hawking has something called ALS, and he can't walk or talk, and he's probably the smartest man in the world, and everybody knows it. That is so cool. I bet he gets really frustrated sometimes. After the show went off, I got real quiet. He's like you, sort of, isn't he? Mrs. V asked. I pointed to yes on my board, then pointed to no. I don't follow you. She scratched her head. I pointed to need on my board, then to read. Need read. Need read. I know you can read lots of words, Melody, Mrs. V said. I pointed again. More. I could feel tears coming. More, more, more. Melody, if you had to choose, which would you rather be able to do? Walk or talk? Talk, I pointed to my board. I hit the word again and again. Talk, talk, talk. I have so much to say. So Mrs. V made it her new mission to give me language. She ripped all the words off my communication board and started from scratch. She made the new words smaller, so more could fit. Every single space on my talking board got filled with names and pictures of people in my life, questions I might need to ask, and a big variety of nouns and verbs and adjectives, so I could actually compose something that looked like a sentence. I could ask, where is my book bag? Or say, happy birthday, Mom, just by pointing with my thumb. I have magic thumbs, by the way. They work perfectly. The rest of my body is sort of like a coat with the buttons done up in the wrong holes. But my thumbs came out with no flaws, no glitches. Just my thumbs. Go figure. Every time Mrs. V would add new words, I learned them quickly used them in sentences, and was hungry for more. I wanted to read. So she made flashcards. Pink for nouns, blue for verbs, green for adjectives. Piles and piles of words. I learned to read. Little words like fish and dish and swish. I liked rhyming words. They're easy to remember. It's like a buy one, get the rest free sale at the mall. I learned big words, like caterpillar and mosquito, and words that follow crazy rules, like knock and gnome. I learned all the days of the week, months of the year, all the planets, oceans, and continents. Every single day, I learned new words. I sucked them in and gobbled them up like they were Mrs. V's cherry cake. And then she would stretch out the cards on the floor, position me on a big pillow so I could reach them, and I'd push the cards into sentences with my fists. It was like stringing the beads of a necklace together to make something really cool. I like to make her laugh, so I put the words into wacky order sometimes. The blue fish will run away. He does not want to be dinner. She also taught me words for all the music I heard at home. I learned to tell the difference between Beethoven and Bach, between a sonata and a concerto, she'd pick a selection on a CD, then ask me the composer. Mozart. I'd point to the correct card from the choices she'd set in front of me. Then I'd point to the color blue on my board. 
Huh? she asked. When she played a selection from Bach, I'd point to the correct composer, then once again touch the color blue on my board. I also touched purple. She looked confused. I searched around for the right words to explain what I meant. I wanted her to understand that music was colorful when I heard it. I finally realized that even Mrs. V couldn't figure out everything in my head. We kept going. Sometimes she'd play hip-hop music, sometimes oldies. Music and the colors it produced flowed around her as easily as her clothing. Mrs. V took me outside in all kinds of weather. One day, she actually let me sit outside in the rain. It was steaming hot, and I was sticky and irritable. It must have been about 90 degrees outside. We were sitting on her porch, watching the storm clouds gather. She told me the names of all the clouds and made up stories about them. I knew that later she'd have the names of every kind of cloud on word cards for me. Big old Nimbus up there! He's black and powerful and can blow all the other clouds out of the sky. He wants to marry Miss Cumulus Cloud, but she's too soft and pretty to be bothered with such a scary guy. So he gets mad and makes storms, she told me. Finally, old Nimbus got his way, and the rain came down around me and Mrs. V. It rained so hard I couldn't see past the porch. The wind blew and the wet coolness of the rain washed over us. It felt so good. A small leak on Mrs. V's porch let a few drops of rain fall on my head. I laughed out loud. Mrs. V gave me a funny look that hopped up. You want to feel it all? she asked. I nodded my head. Yes, yes, yes. She rolled me down the ramp Dad had built, both of us getting wetter every second. She stopped when we got to the grass, and we let the rain drench us. My hair, my clothes, my eyes and arms and hands. Wet, wet, wet. It was awesome. The rain was warm, almost like bath water. I laughed and laughed. Eventually, Mrs. V rolled me back up the ramp and into the house, where she dried me off, changed my clothes, and gave me a cup of chocolate milk. She dried off my chair, and by the time Dad came to pick me up, the rain had stopped and everything was dry once more. I dreamed of chocolate clouds all night.